All right, we're going to solve now the pulley question. This is the example on the note. A couple things to remember about pulleys and strings is that as this mass goes down, it's attached to this string, so it pulls the other mass. So it's, it's common sense. The other thing about a string is it doesn't stretch. If it did, it would be inelastic. Um, so as fast as this one falls, it's going to push this one or pull this one across the table. First thing we do when we solve these questions is we're going to draw a free body diagram for both masses. We have a three kilogram mass and a five kilogram mass. So let's start. So to draw a free body diagram, you simply just draw a box, write down how big it is, and an arrow pointing in the direction of the force. The only force here is the force of tension. So Ft. The other mass is a five kilogram mass and it's just hanging. So we have five kilograms. So pulling it down is the force of gravity. We have Fg equals mg, which is equal to five times 9.8. So five times 9.8. And when we plug that into our calculator, we get 49 Newtons. The other force affecting this one is the string. The string's preventing it from free falling down. And any forces due to strings, ropes, we call that a tension force. So F, T, T for tension. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the F net formula for each of these um, free body diagrams. So for the first one, I know F net is equal to MA which is equal to the sum of all the forces. In this case here, there's only one force and that's just Ft. I plug in what I know. M is three. So I'm gonna write down 3A is equal to Ft. I don't know anything else. For the second diagram, the second free body diagram, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start with my F net formula. So I got F net is equal to MA is equal to the sum of the forces. Now, the question is, which force do you write down first? Always write the bigger one first. The way you can tell which one's bigger is which way it's moving. So if I were to let go of this mass, it would go down. So the downward force, which is the force of gravity, must be bigger. So I'm gonna write down force of gravity plus the force of tension. Tension's in the other direction. Write down what you know. I know the mass, the mass is five, so it'll be five, A is equal to, Force of gravity is 49. Now, tension is in the opposite direction of gravity. So because it's in the opposite direction, I need to make it minus. So minus the force of tension. Now it's a simple math problem. I have two equations and two unknowns. You learn lots of ways to solve this in math class. You can use any way you like. I like substitution because I have Ft is equal to 3A. So wherever I see an Ft on this side, I'm going to put in the 3A. So this 3A is going to go anywhere I see the FT because they mean the same thing. Let's keep going. So I'm going to solve this equation now. I have 5A is equal to 49 minus 3A. Uh, to get the minus 3A onto the other side, I'm going to add 3A to both sides, plus 3A, plus 3A. Uh, 3 plus 5 is 8, so I have 8A on this side is equal to 49. 3A minus 3A just cancels out. To get A by itself, I divide both sides by 8. Divide by 8. Divide by 8. Eights cancel. And I finally have A is equal to 6.125 meters per second squared. Now, this is the acceleration. I've solved for the acceleration. I still need to solve for the tension. Well, if I have the acceleration, I could plug it into either the first formula or the second formula. It makes no difference. This one looks simpler, so I'm going to use that. So let's do that now. We're going to solve for the tension. This formula says force at tension is equal to 3A. Well, let's plug it in. A is 6.125. 6.125 times 3. I got those backwards. 3 times 6.125 is equal to 18.375 newtons. A 
and that's the force of tension. 